Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining in again. Um, yeah, I have David Hofmeister here with me today. What a blessing. Yeah, it's great to be back yeah. on this, this renowned show, Out of the Blue Conference. Yeah, Zoo. thank you. Because David is only really here for this week, and then he will continue on with his spontaneous traveling in Mexico, then um, drop down to Australia mm -hmm. for 10 days, Melbourne, and then Sydney. So then later on, actually, um, um, Dave and I both will be in Australia later this year for the first ever Cross America Conference in um, Melbourne yeah. on the last weekend of October. But before that, we'll be going through China and Japan Japan for the very first time, mm -hmm. and China for the, I guess, the sixth time or fifth or sixth. Fifth, yeah. yeah. In Japan, we were in the airport, but that doesn't count. They always <laughs> say, "No, that doesn't count. You got to get out of the airport. Don't even <laughs> consider that." <laughs> yeah. And we'll probably come from Europe, I would imagine. So there'll be something going on. To be another round the world tour kind of. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, yeah, I, I guess I just also want to put the word out there that um, just we all just feel such a strong call in Europe, and um, it feels very likely that I will be in Europe this June, and um, very open to to join and to do some talks while I'm there. So let me know if you feel you want to connect in any way, and David would uh, probably join a little later in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, we're also looking for center in Europe to, you know, to be able to have a community that is happening more longer term in Europe, hopefully after this fall. So. Yeah, yeah, we're putting the word out. We've had some great experiences over there before in Alazena, Spain, and some amazing long four and six week retreats in Mallorca. Yeah. Near Palma the last time, we weren't too far outside of Palma. So uh, we're just putting the word out to our friends that it would be great to have a base over there and mm. see how it goes. But it's, it's a lot of dear friends over there and we know there's a very strong call and lots and lots of invitations. <coughs> so that might be good for us to kind of go through the invitations folder just to see. Because over the years I've had a lot of people contact me from England and yeah, all around. So we can s refresh those and see. Yeah. The call is still there. Yeah, it does feel like um it's all the divine timing and divine calling and orchestration cuz feels like Europe has just keep calling, calling, calling us back every year. I think it's even for me it's probably the fourth consecutive year to go there every single summer for a period of time and for David it might be t I don't know how many years you've been keep going back I to Europe. I think around 2000 and End of 2004 or 2005 um, was probably the, f the first time I went over there, so yeah. it's probably close going on 12, 12 years. Yeah, so it just feels like, you know, when the call is there and the spirit is just so eager to meet it in any way that is available, because I was reading it yesterday, um, talking about how much you want salvation, and it says in the Course that the eagerness of the Holy Spirit to give it to you is so intense that he can't wait, and yet he will wait in patience. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, can you imagine the eagerness the Holy Spirit <laughs> has to give it to you? Like this word, intense. Yeah. It's like, please, are yeah. you ready? <laughs> yeah. Let me give it to you. Yeah. And I can feel that too, like just... You know, when there's like this tinkle and spark to go somewhere, it's just so eager and just so intense, wanting to 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 go and give and have this body used for communication. Because I feel like David has been allow allowed his body to be used in this way in the last thirty years, just to go wherever that is called. And because um, I was reading, I was telling him, and I was reading this, um, not reading, I was watching this clip from a Sufi master, and um, he was saying that 
in his spiritual journey, and maybe in a lot of people's spiritual journey, um, a teacher is is really essential. And the way that the teacher works with the student is the student needs to surrender to the teacher to such extent that you. You let go of all your pride. You let go of nothing in front of your teacher. You become a dust. You become nothing in front of your teacher, and you give everything to to the teacher, as if you're giving everything to God. Then the teacher pull you through, pull you through, pulls you through to whatever ego, pride, and attachment, and preference, and blocks. And then the audience, one of the The person from the audience asked him, "How do I find my teacher?" And he said, "Really, it is up to the teacher to find the students. So when the students are ready,、um, somehow the the teacher will be informed at some level, and he would just go out and he will meet the student. And normally the students are really clueless, having no idea that this is the teacher or this is my path or this is what it takes." And yet, the teacher would know, and and not necessarily knowing it consciously, but the vibration or the teacher would just be there for you, like always calling you and calling you. And I just feel like, what an honor! And because I feel even for me to even be able to have this opportunity to to be up close with you and really truly watch and live with a mystic and watching someone. Traveling through time and space, and talking such a down-to-earth, a normal way, and and yet the mind is not. You just you can feel the mind is not in time and space, not hooked into anything, not attaching to anything, not believe in anything, and yet everything that's pour out pours out is is so practical, and is purely out of love, purely out of respect. And purely out of just eagerness to help, <laughs> I just feel like I don't know how even to put in words my gratitude and the honor that I feel to actually be able to meet you and be able to, you know, just be in your presence and be pulled through to whatever that、mm. the ego wants to hold back.、Um, and I really feel actually everybody here in the community. Feels exactly the same way、mm. I do. So、mm. yeah, it's the eagerness is bubbling through all of us now, and I think <laughs> it's you know you start to realize that all I give is given to myself, and the teaching and learning are the same. And Jesus says, "There's no one who a teacher of God cannot teach, because there is no one a teacher of God cannot learn from." The teaching and learning is we use those words, but it's like a mechanism of of conversion or. Transformation of mind, coming back into the alignment with spirit, and and then whatever a brother gains, whatever a sister gains, is is a gain for yourself. So it's like people talk about win, win, win. It's just gain, gain, gain. Everybody's being lifted together, and no one is lifted apart, and and there is no lifting if it's not everyone lifted. So the miracle is. Is a sign of perfect equality, which is just a, a reflection of perfect oneness.、Mm. And so there has been that eagerness. I think I, at first, you know, it was a little、uh, strange to be going out on the road and meeting new people, and and that was maybe the the students were showing up、uh, when I began traveling, and I didn't know there was a lot more. There was just droves and droves of of encounters I would have, but it still feels that same. Glee, you know, to hit the road and and go out and shine and share and and have invitations and yeah, it just seems like it just goes on and on.、Mm. And it is a state of mind, so it's not like、uh, there's not a sense of needing to travel or.、Um, at first, I mean, when it first began, I did feel like impelled to travel, but there's never been like a sense of need with it. It's just been like eagerness and glee,、mm. and so it's fun. And now it feels like we've gone around the world and done these things many times, and and it's just very spontaneous. It's just where there's a strong invitation, and 
you know, we're just sounding the trumpet, just mm. saying Jesus is calling us all out of the world, mm. out of the thinking of the world. It's not really calling a body necessarily mm. to be anywhere or whatever, but it's, it's to be called completely out of those thoughts mm. that are concerned for the future or mm. having any kind of regret about the past. Mm. You know, that way of thinking is just not our inheritance at all. Mm. Mm. Yeah, even talking about a center um, or a community, that isn't really even the goal because, um, you know, if, if we ask ourselves why do anything, there isn't really any goal in form to say this is our goal because whenever we have a goal, actually there, it is inevitable that we started to defend this goal and we started to defend against all the other possibilities that we're not aware of because there's like this desire to almost feel I know this is the best outcome and I know this is what I want this I know mind kick in then the defense kick in and it doesn't really matter even whether the goal is achieved the you know the energy is just not open there's no openness anymore to the spirit and spirit cannot enter so really you know for us it just feel um, this desire to be guided and to, you know, yield to, I guess, the will of God and the present guidance, you know. We talked about this morning, there is no way we can have a long-term plan because because it's always the present guidance that um, take priority to even, I want this, I feel called to do this, I feel attracted to maybe doing this but you know we can express when these kind of thoughts come out but eventually what we're called to do and I feel that is truly the only way to go toward God is to yield to every single um, calling or guidance in the present moment and that is at the same time a relinquish against whatever the ego is telling us what we want and who we are and it's like again and again and again and then to to actually experience that is our joy and really there is no separate will it's not even thy will be done it's thy will and my will are one and thank god for letting me taste that mm -hmm. yeah 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 that's where the contentment is it's almost like there's a formula in this world it's like an almost an unspoken formula of of like uh, want or desire and then um, um, strive and then get and then possess and then want some more and the cycle just goes round and round and and actually that cycle doesn't doesn't take your mind anywhere it's just like it binds the mind into sleep that that cycle it's almost unspoken it's just not talked about you know People will say in their common dialogue at the time, what do you want and what are you going to do to get it and oh, work at it or strive at it. You know, we're taught to work hard and strive at it and to get it and to possess it and then, and then it's still there's an emptiness. Jesus says even what you get, you know, the ego will, will pull from your grasp, from your hands and basically he's talking in the attainment of the real world that that there is an alternative that the Holy Spirit will provide everything that you need for as long as you need it, but the Holy Spirit would not have you linger in time. So it's almost the reverse of, of all of that cycle is more that you come to this place of stillness and contentment and you leave the wanting, any wanting, it's okay to have wants still come up and everything, but you leave that to the Holy Spirit. And in that sense, you say, Holy Spirit, you provide the symbols, the images, the means, whatever needs to come uh, into awareness, because from you they will come safely. They won't come with any agendas, with any attachments, or any kind of uh, grab, or need, or clutching. You know, they'll, they'll come very lightly. And under the Holy Spirit's teaching, you will travel light and journey lightly. That sounds good. You know, ultimately, 
he does tell us that the Son of God is no, no traveler in time and space, so even traveling is just a metaphor, but within that metaphor, travel lightly and journey lightly is, is travel lightly within, inside, deeper within, towards the light. And that's very, very comforting. It's very, very comforting. So I feel just very honored and I feel like um, even these last couple of days has been witnesses of such a buzz and swirl as uh, lots of, of uh, inspirations keep flooding in mm -hmm. as far as um, just opportunities to extend, I guess is the best way to put it. And uh, I have some friends down in Sayulita, Mexico. Mexico, just offered the use of, of their house. I think Kirsten and Ricky are going to go over there maybe next weekend and do a gathering and, and things just keep coming in. That's basically how it's gone all along. You know, a spontaneous invitation, come here, come there. It's been mostly in in living rooms and basements and backyards and, um, you know, very simple symbols of, of backdrops of joining to come together and rejoice together with no concern of, of numbers, how many people or, you know, the things that the world sees is so important, you know, those things are just a backdrop and, and uh, you know, it, I remember we were in Mallorca, I see Bridget there, and Bridget was drawn out to the garden, so she went out and just was in a mystical experience out there among the trees and, and among the flowers and plants, and uh, meanwhile, for others, they, they were inside and there was lots of healing going on, lots of mirroring that was going on, and, and that continues as well. But but it, we're all drawn uh, deeper toward the love and toward the light, and for that we can be grateful. Yeah, I feel like, you know, we, we truly can live in a state of just witnessing the miracles every day, because that is truly, I feel like, what, what we witness every day here, even talking about Europe, I, you know, I had this thought yesterday, and then just in the matter of one day, you know, 24 hours, there are just already a lot happening and even a potential place for for the center is already um, presented. So it's like, wow, we haven't even looked yet. So <laughs> it's like <laughs> that kind of speed. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the beauty is that, you know, when we really truly relinqu relinquish the result or the investment in, in any outcome, then it's really, you know, there is no effort because we're not making anything happen. We're not preventing anything from happening and becomes just like a channel to allow, to truly yield and allow any outcome to be presented in front of us. And our, you know, every, every moment is just dedicated to forgiveness. You know, watching whatever that is coming up, not holding back really share our ideas and share our thoughts and trust that it is worthy, you know, to be shared. It is worthy to, our ideas need to be shared and it is worthy to, you know, to be presented. Then we let the chips fall mm -hmm. wherever they may. <laughs> yeah, that's lovely. It's a lovely way to live, just to follow your heart and let the inspiration carry you and then let all the chips just fall wherever they may and not really be concerned about where the chips are falling even. That's the that's the fun part. That's the, the freedom freedom from outcomes, you know. Because the world of perception, as I was saying on some earlier shows, you know, it was just put there to distract us, to keep our focus be on the images and be on the make-believe and to be on fiction. And at some point, you know, when you get into your internal guidance, you get tuned in to your intuition, to the spirit, that becomes so profound and so powerful that that uh, the body's eyes still seem to see and the body's ears still seem to hear and pick up sounds and noises, but it's as if you've just relegated them all into a category of um, of not giving importance because your messages you're going to receive from within, from inner listening. You're not going to be interpreting, uh, you're not going to be 
uh, trying to find meaning and get meaning from the world of images, you're just going to be interdirected, and it's possible to be 100% intuitive or 100% interdirected, and then life's a joy. As they say, life's a joy and then you ascend from the place of inner direction. Mm. So we talk a lot about practicalities and guidance and sometimes people, they see what we seem to be up to around Utah and around the world and and they say, wow, that's that's amazing or how is this happening? And, and for us it's, it's not, um, it doesn't even feel like extraordinary in the sense it feels very natural and it's a natural expression from guidance. Mm. And of course, if you were listening to God, or listening to the voice for God, mm. you would expect things to flow. Why would they not? If The Bible says, if, uh, if God is with us, who can be against us? <laughs> and that, that saying still holds true. If the Spirit is with us, which it truly is, no doubt about that, then, then there is no opposition, then there is no enemy then there is nothing to fight against, mm. and there's a, a sense of ease that comes from mm. that. Yeah, it is definitely like, a, it's actually pretty organic, it's not through planning, it's not through past references, um, it's present guidance that really bring us wherever we are, I guess even this construct of community, however it looks right now, is just through this present guidance and step by step and nobody really knows because nobody had lived in community before and <laughs> none of us so we had no clue um, where it's going and how to how to have a community that is so-called successful because that is not even the goal but it's really about you know just following what is going on and yet you know the life is so so joyful because it becomes just allowing the miracles to come in and we just rejoice in that and the community can be expanding because now we're expanding to you know the online community and every part of the world is our community you know we can join without any obstacles of travels of time zones you know that is truly what what this is about yeah because I feel even I know you kept saying that you didn't really even plan to have a community to start with and none of the people here right now thought I'm going to live in community one day I so I'm so attracted to the concept of community nobody did and if anything maybe a, like the opposite or <laughs> not really sure what this is about but I do feel there is a health healthiness and just for me um I guess it is helpful because it is guided and I can feel the helpfulness of coming together and um, have a very u unified purpose in everything we do because I feel if if the purpose is split there is no way we can achieve anything maybe seemingly achieve something in this world but it's all really meaningless there is really no no way we can truly achieve anything and yet as soon as the goal is unified and I when you talk about win-win it's funny because I was just thinking about it before the show I, I thought really only the only win-win situation is when there is a unified goal and the only unified goal we can have is forgiveness because any other goal we have around the body if I gain you lose it's always you know, dualistic is not unified, and forgiveness is the only goal that gonna make everybody win, make yeah. everybody happy. And then when people come together, when minds coming to come together for this goal, it's extremely powerful and it's extremely fast, seemingly very yeah. very powerful. Yeah, I think that's what it's been because we have a shared goal. I mean, there's been lots of attempts over the decades and the centuries at sharing and I think um, you know we can think back to the 60s and all the attempts and and communes and so on and so forth and and co-ops and um, even like food co-ops like oh let's let's pool together let's grow food together let's let's share food and let's uh, share possessions and share a property I, I have some friends in 
in England that were trying for the longest time to get a, a property started. They had some children, they were all devoted, and they got into all kinds of things, and maybe like a legal lawsuit and all kinds of things, but they, I got a message maybe within the last couple of months of things have come around, and I think they're over on the, on the eastern coast of England. But, so there's things that seem to be hurdles and obstacles, but that's because the, it's just a purification of the purpose. Because truly, if forgiveness is your purpose, then instantly you do share something that actually can be shared, because the Holy Spirit uh, can share that and mm -hmm. does share that with everyone, so to speak. And, and there's, it's something that was designed to be shared. Forgiveness is a shared perspective. Mm. And everything else in the world, whether we get into trying to share resources or share uh, property and, and all of the attempts to share anything, sharing bank accounts and all those kind of things, they will fall short. They are just symbols and they will short, fall short of forgiveness because that's really all that can be shared. Mm. And I love that, that the Course teaches that only the thoughts of God can be shared. So ultimately, that's what creation's about, that's what heaven's about, sharing this creative expression of God. But that's within the realm of, of pure knowledge or pure spirit. So in this world, the only thing that we can share is forgiveness. And it's just like smiling and just seeing the false as false, and that's where there's nothing to get huff about, there's, there's nothing to be concerned about, uh, and, and things become light and laughable uh, through that forgiven perspective. So, I would say that's the thing to consider. What is it for whenever you're considering any kind of venture in the world? It's not so important what the action is or the behavior, but it's the motive, it's the purpose underneath. What is inspiring the action? And we're all starting to get really tuned in to fi find what that inspiration is, find what that purpose is, and then realize the peace that comes from that. And uh, that's a little bit like St. Augustine, love and do what you will. Uh, many centuries ago, St. Augustine uh, said that, and, and I think, you know, it's echoed today. We're still echoing the same very simple statement of St. Augustine, love and do what you will. Be in that alignment with your Source, and, and then everything will flow from that alignment. And you don't even have to be concerned or worried about what that is, or how that's going to happen. Mm. Yeah, I know, because I, I just have this movie in mind as we we're talking, this movie, a uh, Swedish movie called Force Major, and uh, it, it is about the, the family went to the Alps and uh, encountered an uh, avalanche. And when the avalanche hit, um, the husband just, uh, the first reaction was to run away and protect himself and leave the, the children and the wife behind. And the wife stayed to protect the children. In the end, nobody really got hurt, but the conflict out of that event that came up between the husband and the wife, and the whole movie is about how they were trying to face that emotion. And... They really, because when we were watching it, we were just actually in in awe about, in, you know, like, wow, the, when there is no purpose of healing, there is no real foundation to, to do anything, because when, even when they were trying to communicate, the purpose was either to protect a self-image, to deny this is what happened, or to prove the other person wrong, to prove I'm a victim, so they have keep trying, the husband and wife keep trying to solve this deep emotional turmoil that happened through this event. And there was no way, there was absolutely no way that they could achieve peace in this, in this event. So I was just even saying, you know, in any relationships, it's pretty easy to observe when the goal is not forgiveness that comes up then you, you really started to feel there is really very difficult to go anywhere in the relationship. And yet if the, the, the goal in a, any relationship is purely forgiveness and it's a joint purpose, you know, it's going to be very, very joyful, you know, because you're not in defense, you're not in avoidance or in fear of anything that can come up 
because your goal is to expose it together and look at a way to have the spirit enter and forgive together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's very much a that we are asked to pray and and open up and and listen and follow, and then we will open our hearts and we will grow, so to speak, or open our expand our consciousness. And even when there seems to be mistakes, it's not like their lasting mistakes, it's not like those mistakes have a, an eternal consequence. Those are just turn into opportunities and little barometers, like, hmm, that doesn't feel good. And then we go back, and we go back inside to uh, what was my purpose or what was my motive. And uh, recently uh, Nikita and I were having talking and having lunch with Judy Scutch, and she said, at one point, in kind of a past life reading, um, she said she came very close, and, and it was almost like very close to, felt like enlightenment or waking up from the dream, and then she made a wrong turn, and seemed to have all this guilt and consequences. Uh, it's kind of funny to think of it as one wrong turn, <laughs> and and you're off onto a, a delay maneuver of guilt. So that's why the, her feeling inside was for completion. Uh, just that word came out of her completion. And I really feel like that's the desire and the devotion. When we come together, we are here for completion. We are here to reach and experience a state of perfect innocence. Uh, th that innocence that transcends mistakes, that transcends even the possibility of mistakes. That sense of innocence that says you, you're always in the right place at the right time, so to speak. You, you can't make a wrong turn. That's what atonement or true forgiveness is. It just holds nothing against yourself or against anyone else. And to be a bringer of innocence, oh my gosh, what a, what a great purpose to have for your life. Going around spreading joy, blessing everything and everyone that comes into your gaze. Um, how could you have a more wonderful purpose than to let your life, so to speak, in this world just be used for that? And I just feel like it's happening, like we're just all being showered with gratitude because of that. And I do see that this world is just a call to witnesses, so as I've kind of opened up and I've met so many wonderful, wonderful people and experienced so much joy, I really feel that it's just uh, inside, I was open to happiness, and I'm calling forth the witnesses of happiness. Uh, and and for those who, who whose purpose is to share and communicate, uh, you will attract communication to you. And here we are, you know, we we're broadcasting, we're Periscope, we're on Zoom, we've got our studio audience. If I could turn the cameras around and show the, all the lo the lovelies here, there's Eric. He's going to move one of the cameras around, but yeah, there's all the lovelies gathered here. We have attracted a lot of communication. <laughs> it just goes and goes and goes, and it <laughs> it radiates. There we go. It just keeps radiating out, just bellowing out, and keeps going and going and going. You know, and and yeah, what else is there really? Right. That's all how I feel. I think Jesus had um, described in the course. Around this joy, when you when you truly, your only wish is to see your brother innocent and to hold innocence in your heart when you perceive someone. He said, "No happiness or joy you ever tasted in this world will even come close to to the joy you feel when you actually have this goal as your only goal and as you look at your your brothers yeah. Yeah. and everything." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's beautiful. Hmm. Oh, do we have yeah. any questions in the studio, or we can open it up? Hey, so um, I recently was having some trouble um, deciding what lesson to be on, and I started. The ego kind of took over, and it was like uh, my goal became to to finish the book, but I have actually started and stopped the course so many times and I was I was trying 
I had gone through lesson 70 and then I was in Canada and we did some lessons and then I tried to be on the same lesson that David was recording and then the group in Camas switched to another lesson <laughs> and so then I skipped some lessons that I thought maybe I had already done and I'm like on the I'm probably about 10 lessons ahead of what you're recording right now and then I thought well maybe I'll just stay on a lesson for a while so David can catch up with me <laughs> so I can be on the same one but anyway I'm, I'm just getting thrown around so much and and it's almost like I'm I want somebody just tell me okay just be on this lesson and yet I want to be able to someday say that I've actually gone through all the workbook lessons so and then I thought thought of starting at the very end and going backwards and I just feel like I'm being kind of oppressed by the ego <laughs> and I don't know I don't know what to do so what do you have to say about that <laughs> Yeah, it's what you're expressing is this, the ego is so afraid of awakening and so resistant to the Course, it's almost like, you know, in, in Superman there's kryptonite, <laughs> and Superman is not so fond of kryptonite, kryptonite, it stays away from it, well the ego is, this Course is so direct, but it's kind of interesting, you know, that there may be times, I know when I first had the Course I would pop it open like an oracle and and just use it in that way, which there's nothing in the Course that says use this like an oracle. Uh, but that was an inspiration for me. But with the workbook lessons, you know, it's interesting that he just gives uh, an introduction and um, he says you, you may uh, not believe the lessons, you may actively resist the lessons, it will not matter, just do them. And then he just gives the two instructions. So when you think about all the instructions we've had in the world in education and all the things we've went through to learn so many things, it's kind of interesting that he has two instructions and it's just don't do more than one lesson a day and then as best as you can try not to make any exceptions to the lesson. But that's a discipline, it's really I think academia or learning to play the violin or learning to ride a bike or learning just about anything in this world, it takes discipline. And um, we've subjected ourselves to that discipline in some areas and then sometimes we say, wow, this is, is a direct shot to forgiveness and self-realization and then we just observe, hmm, look at the resistance to that discipline. You know, it's almost like we're, we're more willing to, to, to learn other things than we, than we are to forgive our mistakes. So, I think it's just good to watch the mind and watch all that and then I think probably though if the Course is genuinely your path there probably will come a point where you just kind of settle in and uh, even for me this year of in, within the past year when I started uh, recording a section of the text and then a lesson uh, I did get some comments like what are you doing? By golly you know 25 years you've been traveling and sharing this stuff and what are you doing reading from the Course again? And, but to me it's all involuntary, so I, it just felt, it felt very natural. But it, it did feel like uh, there was a, definitely a, some kind of a commitment underneath it, like to continue. Uh, even when I was in locations on my travels, my spontaneous travels where I didn't have any internet access, I didn't have any cell phone access, I didn't feel an urgency to try to find a way to do it, it was just like, well, that will, when I do have access again, I'll continue right on. And, and that was just to be patient and say, you know, I'll just wait until I, I have the access and I'll continue on with the next one and just keep going. So, I think you're headed in that direction and you, you shouldn't be too hard on yourself as you watch it. Uh, it's almost like the uh, elevator scene in the movie Revolver when he's in the elevator and the ego is kicking and screaming and pounding the sides of the elevator and it's a wild child. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a bastard child. It doesn't, it doesn't have a parent. It, it, it wasn't created, so it, it doesn't even have a parent. It's that wild and it's very impetuous and it's very rebellious and, and 
you're coming to the point now where you can start to watch it. And uh, as I was saying the other day, thank you for sharing. Thank you for pounding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, start to have a lightness with watching it and uh, and not taking it on so heavily as if uh, as if it's you. Because that's the greatest deception of the ego, is convincing the mind that it is you. And it's not. It never was and never will be. So, the time will come, I think, where you'll just find yourself uh, flowing from one to the next to the next, and go, oh, how, how lovely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, we thought we, we said we might talk about community just because it's kind of a, for many people, still kind of an ambiguous field or ambiguous symbol. Mm. Yeah, I guess uh, I've, I started to read a lot of, um, or maybe just come to my awareness that seems like a community of different um, focus started to uh, spring up everywhere these days in different parts of the world people actually found out that living together is just really in different ways very very helpful and I know that there is this even um, a community in San Francisco where um, this huge house with 40 rooms and people entrepreneurs millionaires IT artists they all choose to live together to share the resource and not just the resource as in the same kitchen and the same meal, uh, same grocery shopping or something, but also the each other's skills because when they come together there is just a lot of collaboration that spring out from you know, you're living in your own home and trying to get something done, you're completely on your own. So it's by their choice to to live like that, um to tap into this this wave of collaboration and and communication as well really encourage communication so it just feels like almost some huge opening of people started to feel that we can collaborate in such a bigger way and communicate open up communication in such a bigger way that that's you know not choose to isolate and even having to um you know, just segregate, living in a way of segregation. But I guess um, I feel everybody is probably just trying to find out the purpose, the common purpose and the common goal, because I also heard it and I totally agree that when the community doesn't have a un unified goal and purpose, it's just not going to last. It doesn't really matter the goal. And for us, I feel probably we choose the goal first, forgiveness, you know, each one of us, as we were studying A Course in miracle, Miracles, we choose to really follow um, and really take it deep in our minds and choose forgiveness. And of course, the form started just to unfold in this way without our control. Really, nobody is in, in control of any of it. And for certain people, um, it does not unfold in this way. But for for us, in my own experience, it did unfold and it still is unfolding in this way. Um, so I just feel, you know, it's it's not really something that we did or we are planning, continuing um, to to plan to do. It's really something that is just unfolded on its own as we choose this f uh, purpose, this focus, and this collaboration. And I just feel very, very helpful. You know, of course, forgiveness, you know, it, it is a word, it's a concept, it's a practice, but it, it looks in so many ways. It's so practical when new people come in here. I know this morning in our center, Lisa brought up this uh, handbook because um, as the community started to grow, um, something come together as a kind of um, compilation of some principles or teachings and practical guidelines of no people pleasing, no private thoughts, what they are and how to practice them. She she just brought it up this morning to say, let's begin again. Like, let's remind our mind 
the focus and the purpose of us coming together. And it really looks very differently. You know, it could look like someone is um, yielding his preference in food or in what he thinks is the best for himself by yielding to a, a, a bigger purpose or a guidance in the moment. So it may look that way and it may look like chop wood carry water for some other people. It may look like communication like this. Um, it may look like a relationship that comes together. Someone started to express um, love in a relationship context. It really doesn't really um, matter what form it is. It is the, the, the purpose that's in mind that really truly matters and can carry us through whatever we're doing. So. Yeah. yeah, and I think it, it starts to become just like a state of mind. I We've had so many interesting experiences out at our monastery because I remember last year, um, yeah, with no one having lived in the monastery really over the winter, um, it was just so funny when um, some of us went out there and um, I remember Jason telling stories of uh, going into this octagon room where I had been and uh, it's little, was it a, a mouse? Like a oh, mouse yeah. or a chipmunk, you know, turning the light on and this mouse just staring at Jason and like looking at him like, what are you doing here? Almost like, I, well, I live here. <laughs> well, I, I live here. You sh I'm turning the light on. Are you going to run? No. Are you running? <laughs> you know, they just, it just had this, they Telepathic. just had this look like, you know, like we're we're here, we're equals, and this is my home. Uh, you know, right? And and the mouse actually look at Jason and turn around, saying, "I'm going to show you my family because they're all here." So he went back and went to his his little hole or something, and point to Jason. This is where we, I live, and my families are here. And then he walked forward to just stare at Jason. So there's like all happening telepathically. Telepathically. <laughs> and and it happens with us at the monastery with you know there's everything from like goats and deer and cows and rabbits and so many chipmunks. chipmunks. Uh, we've had stories. We had Stevie, the, the named one of the chipmunks Stevie after Stevie Wonder, because it was a blind chipmunk, but it it's became familiar with certain voices, and so it's like that's the the family. Mm. And you feel the, the love and connection. We've had our cat, Sweetie, here, and we've had our experiences with Tripod and different ones here, but but it's a state of mind of just acceptance. It's like, I think it wasn't there, I think in the main house there were some bats that made themselves at home. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was this whole, it was all a thought process like, process, like, you know, what is my purpose? Am I going to try to get rid of the bats? You know, can we coexist and so on and so forth. Ultimately, I think it's all part of this transformation of consciousness where we feel so connected and so one with everything that we don't seek to change the world. We don't try to alter the world in any way. We're the dreamer of the dream. We really fully accept that and it's so peaceful. But there's no contention, there's no trying to um, make a change, make a shift. Um, one time a friend of mine was going to come and co-host a, a retreat with me and um, she brought along this this woman and um, we put her up above, I think above the bathhouse, there was a couple rooms up where you had your room. and. Um, before the retreat started, I just kept looking up there, and there was a bird that kept flying into the window, like I kind of nicknamed him Kamikaze Bird. He just kept flying into the window, and basically he continued on the whole retreat. It was just a forgiveness lesson of thinking that that Kamikaze Bird had any meaning, as she, she seemed to want uh, silence in the physical sense, and we know that it's, silence isn't really physical, but eventually I, I saw him uh, trying to put uh, like sheets up on the, over the windows and to try to capture the bird and to do all these different things. And it, that bird was such a teacher in terms of, of letting go. We're just to come to a state of non-judgment, but it was quite 
humorous for me. But I was enjoying the whole thing. It was like some kind of a Lucille Ball episode or whatever where where this and so finally they put it got up there and put these big sheets over this window. This bird kept pounding this thing. You see him fly off and come back and pound some more blasting into this thing and then when they put the sheets on one window it went around to the side window and it pounded away <laughs> on the side window. Just on one room. The, whoever, the woman that was in that room was, was <laughs> drawing that forth. And all you can do is watch. You know, there's really nothing to change. I'm sure that's a lot of what I talked about in that retreat too. Mm -hmm. I couldn't help but talk about that. But but that's, that's what we're talking about. Just get coming to a point where you don't interpret things good or bad, or right or wrong, in form. And that's the peace, that's the stillness, mm. right there. Mm. Eventually, community, I think, it just keeps expanding in your mind so that it just embraces the whole world. It, you, you have a community of perception. Mm. So that's what the real world of the happy dream is. It's, it's a community without boundaries, it doesn't have a beginning, it doesn't have an end. The cosmos is your community, mm. and once you make the cosmos your community, then you are on the tractor beam to communing with Source, because there's no opposition and no opposite in mm. Source. So mm. that's, that's beautiful. Mm. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Go ahead. Thank you. Well, first of all, it's lovely to see you both. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for talking about community. And because it's something that I'm with a lot at the moment. Um, as you know, I've had a small mini community in my home here for about nine, ten months. Mm. And um, after the silent retreat in Finland, I really felt to come home and just be here on my own in silence. And it, it, was, it has been a very, very helpful time for me. Um, and then um, I had a function with on the silent retreat coming up in the spring here. And um, I stepped back from that because I, I, really, I really felt the call to stay within the silence. And in stepping back and talking with Jenny about it, I do see that... I still have a great fear of collaboration of, as you know, I've been, I've lived on my own for a very long time. And, and this is a sort of new experience for me to be with people all the time. And it's almost like you also talked about making what might appear to be a wrong turn. I don't know whether this is a wrong or right turn. In fact, it's one of the things I've had to look at is right or wrong or good or bad or worse or better because they're all ego concepts or thoughts. And um, I suppose what I'm really wanting to bring forward is this deep fear that's within me of this sort of close collaboration. Um, because it is something I would like to, I would like to step away from, well, let go of, so that I can be at home either in community or not in community. And at the moment, I am spending my days on my own, mostly in silence. I look at a lot of your things, um, I meditate a lot, I pray a lot, I have quite a lot of Skype contact, people just, I mean today I had three 
people contact me whom I haven't, them, you know, who are mighty companions, who just sort of have come in. And each of those conversations has been, for me, very prayerful because I am asking all the time now to be, to see all those I meet, um, to see the Christ in them. That's the way it comes to me. And um, I do have very beautiful joinings in that. And I suppose, I don't know whether I've got a question or whether I'm just saying something and you can speak to it, but it's it's about, have I made a wrong turn? In some ways I feel yes, and in other ways I feel no, because something is coming forward, but in a different way at the moment. Um, I don't... I don't know if I can, I don't know what more to say really, but perhaps you can speak a bit towards it. Because, you know, I've had to look at a, um, a lot of my, what I thought was my own self-image. I mean, I didn't recognise it as that, but that's what it's been. My, my image of getting things right and things looking right and things like that. And, you know, really look at that as well. Yeah, I can talk about that. What's coming to me is uh, is that God and Spirit, love is just so absolutely generous. Uh, this kind of feeling that I get, it's so so full and so generous that that ultimately its message it keeps conveying is you you can't mess it up you know you don't have to have a fear that somehow you can mess it up even when Judy was talking about a wrong turn and seeming guilt and consequences you know she had a smile on her face because she said I'm here for completion uh, and she's like right in the tractor beam of that and that's that feeling like oh I can't really mess it up I can't really decide apart from from love. And so when I think of uh, of you and I think of all of the beloveds in Europe and all over the past couple of days Europe's been coming to mind so much and lots of things, ideas seem to be coming through very strong but but I I think of our, our last time that I was with you I think was in on Mallorca um, when we were in Amara's uh, three houses outside of Palma. And how that even happened, uh, being there in Ireland, doing a, a retreat in Ireland, and here comes Amara up from Mallorca saying she just heard about me on the internet, she shows up and she just blends right in, in there in Ireland with all of us, having not really known of me much before, just kind of, this is David, and then go and then meeting me, and then during that wonderful retreat uh, saying, can I have a one-on-one, -on -one, doing a one-on-one -on -one with her, she just said, I I haven't met the love of my life, I'm just I so much want to meet my soulmate, and and doing a one-on-one -on -one in that, and, and saying, can you help me with that, and then at some point, oh, and by the way, I offered my house to the Holy Spirit five years ago, and they haven't done anything with it, what's the deal, why, why aren't they, uh, using my my offer and then even answering your own question, oh, maybe I think I'm to offer it uh, to have a, a, some kind of a retreat or something down there. And by the end we were just rejoicing in that. And here we come down there and there's three houses on this so many hectares and and we had that amazing, uh, I guess six weeks for you that was, or however many weeks for people were having. And then that little mini community you've had, that kind of just sprung out of that uh, very naturally. I, I just feel the generosity of how the Spirit leads us uh, and opens our heart up. And so I think that's the Spirit in which we come together in the sense that uh, we're, we're opening, and it's a very devotional path, and there is no formula for it, so we can't, you know, draw out some kind of formula and say, just plug yourself in and follow the formula. It has to be very intuitive. And uh, 
yeah, what's been coming in over these last days is just that, that there's something coming this summer and it felt like some some touring. Uh, Francis was feeling kind of starting off in England and then doing some touring and Kirsten said she felt it every time I talk about it and, and I felt a call, but it would be some touring and then maybe some kind of coming together like we did uh, in Palma uh, at, at Amara's house and then something continuing on um, after that. But it's just really gentle and generous when you think that, that the script is written that, that everyone who is, plays a part and that everyone is always playing their part um, perfectly. We just have to, to see the Christ in one brother or one sister and it will transfer to everyone and everything. It's, it's not a, a collective kind of a multiple thing where you keep building and building and building towards a Christ realization. It's just seeing one brother, one sister without judgment. And um, I also like the part in The Course in Miracles where it says, a teacher of God can heal the world without a sound. Uh, that's, I'm sure that you, that appeals to you in, as you allow yourself to go into this, the silence, without a sound, without a, an action, without a, needing to meet anybody, needing to even speak to anybody. The presence of love is, can heal the world through the stillness. And so I, I think it comes down to more, when you look at any decision you seem to have in your life, it's just, you come very honestly to what is this for? Uh, is this have a feeling of reverence with it? Does it have a, a feeling of, of deep purpose and deep meaning? Uh, are my contacts, even Skype calls or meetings, is it very meaningful and purposeful? And, and as that is the prayer of your heart, then amazingly everything and everyone in the whole cosmos just will mold and shape to, to reflect that, to meet the mind in that. And that is just amazing. That's like that least Amor song, my self is ruler of the universe. The capital self, my Christ self, is ruler of the universe. I am not at the mercy of the world. The world is, is there to reflect my heart and, and my joy. So, I think that's the way to look at it. You're just, it's a discernment. You're going through a daily discernment and to trust that the Spirit will carry you through. That's the, that's the one thing you can focus on. You don't need to focus on anything else. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm, it's precious. Precious. We're all staying tuned. We're tuned in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think just we we also want to trust our pure the purity of our heart and our desire, because you know we know that we want to be happy. We want to follow the spirit and we want forgiveness and as long as we know that and we just allow the spirit to show us like show me convince me and make it obvious so that i don't miss it but sometimes you know i just feel like i always also have to come back to say you know my desire is very very pure is really truly and i i'm not really in the position to judge the form you know there is no judgment of the form is always like how do I feel how do I feel and spirit please show me the way show me the way in form but it's it is not my concern hold the desire in heart yeah mm. <laughs> okay, I think 
you know, um, I have this um, out of the blue show at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time for the past few weeks. And uh, from next week, I'm going to change it to 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, which means that will be earlier uh, late, earlier in the night for Europe and um, will be the morning time for for North America. So Friday. Fridays, yes, still same day, but um, earlier time, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So I hope to continue to join with you and uh, go deeper with anything that comes up in the mind, in the moment. Oh, it's been so great being with all of you. So beautiful. So dear. <laughs> oh. Yes. Thank you so much. And thank you, David, for just being <laughs> being here for this week and broadcasting every opportunity we had. So Yeah, I like it. It's it's for me it's just walk down the hall, hand Eric my phones for the periscope and just it's been just a joy mm. and uh, so easy too from all the travels around the world it's just so much fun and so easy so I just love you all I'm just so glad thank you <laughs> bye